Hello and welcome to Math Matters. I'm Mrs. Wall, and today we're going to learn about grouping by tens and ones. For today's lesson, you will need paper, a pencil, or a writing utensil. We will wait for you as you gather these materials. Today you will have an opportunity to practice your portrait of a graduate attributes as we discover ways that we can group by tens and ones. You can show your math thinking through writing and through speaking throughout the lesson. Take a moment and look at picture A and picture B. What is the same but different? There are many ways that picture A and picture B are the same and are different. One way they are different is picture A represents a number using hands and fingers, and picture B represents a number using 10 frames. With picture A, there are three groups of 10 fingers. How many groups of 10 are in picture B? That's right, there are two groups of 10 in picture B. How many ones are in picture A? There are two ones. How many ones are in picture B? There are three ones in picture B. A and B are the same because they show two and three, but they are different because one has three tens and two ones, and the other one has two tens and three ones. What number is represented by each picture? Picture A represents the number 32. Picture B represents the number 23. Maria's art teacher has given her and her class an art project. She is given a bag with pattern blocks inside. With her assigned pattern blocks, she must first create as many designs as she can. However, there are some rules about her designs. Each design must have 10 blocks. And any leftover blocks at the end must not be included in the design, but left off to the side. Marie's design included a flower, a duck, a donkey, and a puppy. She put her leftover blocks to the side. After she finished her art project, her teacher had a question for her. Maria's teacher wanted to know how many blocks she had in her bag to begin with. Maria started to count her blocks. One, two, three, four. Whew, Maria thought this is going to take her too long and she might lose track of her pattern blocks. Then Maria remembered that each design had 10 blocks in it. Knowing that she has 10 blocks in each design, can you think of a way to count Maria's pattern blocks from the bag? Use your paper and pencil to help you if you need to practice being a communicator or share your thoughts out loud to yourself or someone nearby.
Let's figure it out together. 10, 20, 30, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. How many blocks were in Maria's bag? There are 46 blocks in Maria's bag. Let's look at another way we can describe Maria's blocks from her bag. Maria made four designs with 10 blocks. Maria had six leftover blocks. Maria had a total of 46 blocks. William made a boat, a rocket, a person, and then put his leftovers to the side. On your own paper and pencil, see if you can determine how many blocks were in William's bag and if you can finish the sentences that describe his blocks. William made three designs with 10 blocks. William had four leftover blocks. William had a total of 34 blocks in his bag. Good mathematicians always check their work. Let's check and count by tens and ones William's blocks. 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. Yes, we were right. William had a total of 34 blocks. Before we look at another friend from Maria's art class, let's check in on our learning from today. Our learning goal is that you should be able to say, I am learning to group by tens and ones. Take a moment and think to yourself, how has your learning so far helped you with this goal? Now that we've checked in with ourselves, let's keep learning. Can you identify the designs that Sierra made? Sierra made a caterpillar, an umbrella, a man with a pointy hat holding a present, a wagon, and a penguin. She then put her extra blocks at the bottom. Using your paper, pencil, or words, practice using your communicator skills and determine how many blocks were in Sierra's bag and how you could finish the sentence stems. Sierra made mm, designs with 10 blocks. Sierra had mm, leftover blocks. Sierra had a total of mm, blocks. Sierra made five designs with 10 blocks. Sierra had seven leftover blocks. Sierra had a total of 57 blocks. Let's check our math by counting by tens and ones. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57. Sierra had a total of 57 blocks. Before we can check our learning from today, 
Take a moment and look at the rack and rack beads. What do you notice? Maybe you notice there are five red beads and five white beads. Or maybe you noticed that some beads are on the left side. When we have some beads on the left side, we consider those beads to be in play. And the beads on the right side are out of play. When we're trying to figure out what number is represented or shown on the rec and rec, we look only at the beads that are in play. The number represented is five, since there are five red beads in play. Now that we know which beads are in play and out of play, let's practice what we've learned today. Look at picture A and look at picture B. What is the same but different between these two pictures? One way these pictures are the same are they both have white and red beads. I notice that picture A only has red beads in play and picture B has both red beads and white beads in play. What number is represented or shown in picture A? I see that there are groups of five red beads in picture A, so I can count by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. The number represented in A is 60. What about in picture B? How many are in picture B? Picture B, each row that is in play has five red beads and five white beads at the top, and then it transitions to five white and five red for that last row. Five and five makes 10. We can count by tens to determine the number represented in B. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Picture A is different because it has 12 rows of five to make 60. And picture B is different because it has seven rows of 10 to make 70. In today's lesson, we went over ways to group by tens and ones. Mathematicians can communicate their ideas in many ways. Take a moment to think about yourself as a mathematician and a communicator. Were you able to speak so others could understand your math thinking? Were you able to write to share your ideas? Think about our time together today. What is something that you learned and what is something that you are still wondering about? You are always welcome to share what you learned and what you wondered with your someone at your home or your teacher during office hours.
Thank you for joining me for today's first grade episode of Math Matters. I'm Mrs. Wall and I hope you have a mathematical day and keep on counting. I will see you soon.